Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Dee Dee. On this channel, I cover hearing loss related topics along with some tips and strategies and my challenges with hearing. The goal for this channel is to create videos for people with hearing loss to come and watch videos so that they don't feel like they're alone. So the topic of this video is how to live with tinnitus. If you have hearing loss and experience tinnitus, this is the video for you. First, I will discuss what tinnitus is, what causes it, and what makes it worse. If you stick with me to the end, I'll share what I do to cope with it and how I reduce the reoccurrence of tinnitus. You know, hearing with normal functioning auditory system within the ear, that's connected to our brain. There are a lot of active nerves trying to make sense of all the sounds coming in. There's high frequencies and low frequencies and everything in between that the brain is constantly trying to interpret so that we can understand it. The way I like to think about sounds being processed in that auditory system is similar to a way and the keys on a piano list. On the left side is a low pitches or sounds that you would hear to the right is the higher pitch sounds. Is that the right way? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so the low keys and the high keys and every key in between. So what is tinnitus? Now there are two ways that I've heard tinnitus being pronounced. The first way and the way that I like to pronounce it as you already heard so far is tinnitus. And the second way I've heard my audiologist say it and other hearing loss professionals say it, and that is tinnitus. Tinnitus. Yeah, it's not one that I prefer to say. I'll stick with tinnitus. Now, if there's something wrong with the hearing system that we're talking about, the auditory system, then that's when the brain starts to get a little confused, I think. And those active nerves are trying to understand what's being brought in our head. So anything that's disrupting the hearing, whether it's wax or whether if you have some sort of infection in your ear, that's what's going to cause some delay of hearing getting into the auditory system. It's in the auditory cortex at that part of the brain and trying to figure out what's being heard around you. People with tinnitus will hear different sounds differently from other people. No one person with tinnitus will hear the same thing as somebody else. Now they may hear sounds in one ear or both ears, but sometimes they just think they're hearing it in their head. The sounds we hear with tinnitus is not coming through the ears. It is actually coming through the brain. I've heard people say that they've heard ringing and buzzing and this kind of whistling sound. Now the sounds that I will hear during my tinnitus episodes is first one I'll hear, or one of them I'll hear is whistling like a tea kettle. The second one I will hear is sort of a um, whooshing sound, like the ocean coming in and going back out, or the wind going through the trees. And then another one I'll hear is like a knocking sound. So it's like a woodpecker on a, on a, a tree, peck, 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 peck. Um, or an unbalanced washer where it's just a yeah, I don't, I'm not good at sound effects. <laughs> Might also hear like snapping, like snapping with the fingers. That is so annoying, right? Yeah, I actually hear ringing, ringing in my ears. Um, and sometimes it could be as loud as like feedback in a guitar amplifier. It's like this. Sometimes I perceive hearing the sounds in my right ear, which is actually my good ear. And then sometimes I will hear kind of a faint sound in my left ear, and that's actually my bad ear. But I definitely have to remember that a lot of times it's in my head, and it's actually not the hearing um, functionality of my ears. Like, the sound is... Yeah, it's, it's in my head. Tinnitus is a subjective symptom, and it's important to understand that because it's not a disease or a diagnosis. What I mean by subjective symptom is that you can't see my tinnitus. You can't measure my tinnitus. You can't hear my tinnitus, and that's probably one of the most annoying things is, is that I'll hear things and I'll ask my husband, hey, did you hear that sound? He'll be like, no, no. No. I like to give an example of, say, 
So you have a headache in the morning time and you rate the pain three out of 10 on a pain scale. And then sometime in the afternoon, it will become uh, like a one out of 10 or even an eight out of 10. So it changed from the morning to the afternoon and it could be a tension headache or it could be a migraine headache. And so it, it fluctuates throughout the day maybe or throughout the you know few days a week. Um, but it's different from time to time and the duration can vary as well. So that's the same thing with tinnitus. It comes and goes, it can be worse on some days brief on another day and then there are actually people who are you know really affected pretty badly and it you know really decreases their quality of life. What is tinnitus? So before I get into answering that question I want to really make sure that anybody out there that's experienced tinnitus for the very first time it's important to get checked out by your primary care provider to make sure that there's no red flags that you're missing. So back to uh, what causes tinnitus. So the National Institute for Health says that causes can be related to or caused by ear and nose infections, hormonal changes in women, thyroid dysfunction, age-related hearing loss, and some medication. Well, you know what I find very interesting in this article I have up here is there are over 200 drugs that are known to cause tinnitus. So if you have a sudden onset of tinnitus after starting a medication, you want to make sure you call who? Your primary care provider, PCP. And if you had hearing loss and tinnitus for a long time, I would like to share what makes it worse for me. A few things. I know that seasonal changes does it to me. Um, exposed to constant sounds in my ears, drinking excessive alcohol, um, and doing headstands and yoga. I don't do those anymore. And accidentally hitting my head um, will cause tinnitus, so I have to avoid contact sports. I remember once when I was a little kid in elementary school, I think, and I was playing soccer outside with the with the group of um, students and I did a kick or something and I fell backwards and I hit the back of my head on the pavement and it didn't knock me out or anything, but it knocked out my hearing for two weeks. I had tinnitus the entire time and it was just blaring in my ear. So I went to the ENT doctor and he prescribed me prednisone and it did help after two weeks. Um, but boy, that was the longest two weeks ever. I had to stay out of school and everything like, wow. <laughs> the way that I've navigated what makes my tinnitus worse and was by keeping a tinnitus episode diary as well as um, recording when they happen on my calendar for an entire year. So learning what has made my hearing loss worse with the tinnitus is, because that's another thing, is that when you have tinnitus, you can't hear regular sound very well. It's, it's the craziest thing that things happening in your head, but it affects your hearing. I don't know. It's just confusing. It's taken me a long time to understand what has made my hearing worse. And once I was able to identify what made my hearing worse, I was able to um, share with my primary care provider and my audiologist and my ENT doctor. Yeah, everybody knew. How do I cope and um, make it better to deal with? That's really an important thing, right? Now, remember, this is what I do. Some of these things may help you. I hope they do. But if they don't, there's got to be other strategies out there that can help you maybe reduce the, oh, there's anxiety in, in it and you get kind of withdrawn from the world. So there is other stuff out there. But let me share what I do. The first thing I do is I wear hearing aids. And basically hearing aids kind of overcome or drown out the tinnitus so that I don't hear it as much. It's not that constant annoying sound I hear, but I will hear other sounds louder over it and it kind of drowns it out. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and just take them out because there's this just too much stimulation and I'll just go into a quiet room and read as a distraction. Take my allergy medications during the springtime because that's when I start to have allergies and the fluid in my sinuses and my station tube will be blocked so it helps drain that. Another thing I like to do is I'll chew a lot of gum and that helps to keep my a station tube open. There's a reason why a lot of people will chew gum on the airplane, right? They chew the gum 
and it opens up the anesthesia tubes so that they're, they'll get that pop in their ear. I engage in a lot of self-care activities, like yoga, except I don't do headstands. No, no, no. I do a lot of walking in nature. I play with my dogs. Um, I like to run. I like to go running. It keeps my circulation going well. I like to paint and draw, it's kind of get in my zone. Listen to music, um, good sleep hygiene is super important and consuming a healthy diet just in general that makes you feel better i can tell you i can i tell you tinnitus doesn't make you feel good it makes you feel like you're crazy because there's this crazy sound that's going on in your head and nobody else can hear it like yeah i feel crazy sometimes when i do my self-care stuff it's like no i'm not crazy no nope, no nope. i love me i love me so for a side note, for most of my life, I was told that my hearing was caused by an unknown origin. And I've been deaf since the age of four. Um, and it wasn't until a few years back that I was diagnosed with Meniere's syndrome as well as enlarged vestibular ac aqueduct, ABA. That's a, that's a mouthful, yeah. But it's easy with ABA. And I'm not, I'll talk about those in another video, but that's what I had. And when I knew about what I had, then I was able to research it and investigate the signs and symptoms and whatnot. And then I was able to eliminate some of the things that might aggravate those two diseases or conditions. And one of them is definitely, I can't hit my head because it does disrupt the, um, the aqueduct in my ear. So I just stay away from contact sports. Oh God, I miss it. Okay, folks, that's it for this video. If you like this contact, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you would consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell notification so you know about my next videos coming up. Take care. Bye.